is back today with another Baby Dude interview. Today I have a former two-time MLB All-Star. Uh, he's played for Boston Red Sox, to the Blue Jays, all the way to the Dodgers, and he is a five-time dad. Today I have Shay Hillenbrand. What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Not too bad. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. These interviews are a lot of fun for me. I try to find dads that have extraordinary jobs um, and you're in on that for sure, um, being a, a former baseball player, but also you've moved on to being a badass uh, real estate guy. And so you've done a good transition and I really want to see how it's going with your kids. Yeah, everything's going good. I mean, uh, uh, I have three adopted children uh, that I adopted with my first wife and it was right at the tail end of my major league baseball career. Uh, they're now 16 to 14 and 14. So I'm in that preteen teen phase where where my daughter's rolling her eyes at me and my sons are like trying to bow up to me and and i'm like really dude <laughs> and then my my wife has two beautiful daughters uh i have two beautiful stepdaughters i should say um and they're pacing this nine and seven so 16 14 14 nine and seven yeah that is a that's a span right there for sure and i'm span. sure and all my retirement's being uh, taken care of like i'm spending <laughs> all that on them <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, that it's keeping you very busy. Um, you said you had some kids, that, some of the kids at your tail end of your baseball career. How was managing being on the road and doing that and trying to be full-time dad? Like, I think that's one a lot of people talk about or think about it with athletes and actors and things like that is how did you manage to do both and stay connected? Uh, I don't believe you could stay connected. It's, uh, it's, uh, if you can, it's very difficult I mean, I spent a million dollars in private plane flights to, to fly my kids and my dogs with me. My firstborn son, Austin, uh, he was born in 2004. So I played 2004, five and six and seven. So uh, a little bit while he was younger and he was on 21 plane flights by the time he was one years old. So wow. uh, traveling all the time. But uh, I shared this the other day, which was like a really defining moment of my major league baseball career uh, off the field. Uh, I had an off day. And uh, when I was playing for the Blue Jays, so I took a private jet home here into Arizona. And I hadn't seen Austin, my son, for six weeks. And he was still young, uh, maybe uh, like 18 months. And uh, I was so excited to see him. Like all the accomplishments and all the accolade, accolades I, I had on the Major League Baseball field, like couldn't trump uh, the desire for me to want to be a father. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a father. I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player. And I wanted to own a zoo. So, um, Where's the zoo? Um, the zoo's gone, but, uh, <laughs> I came, I came home, uh, and I, and I got off the plane and I opened up the car door to see Austin, uh, after six weeks. And I was like, Hey buddy, how you doing? I love you. I'm so glad. And he looked at me like he didn't even know who I was. So that was really like a gut punch and a sure. really, uh, like a knife that was driven inside of my soul, uh, that really was difficult for me to, uh, and, 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 and uh, I mean, Austin and my kids are ultimately why I walked away from baseball in the prime of my career, leaving $50 million on the table. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's quite the sacrifice for sure. I mean, I have a two-year-old right now and an eight-month-old baby. So being in the, the pandemic and things that we're doing, to see them every day and get more time is definitely very special. And I, I commend you for, yeah, walking away to spend time with them is, that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah, um, so my three, my three adopted children are within... 18 months so all three of them 18 months man and so my sure. my daughter my middle child and my youngest child noah are three months apart so the only reason why i bring that up is because uh we were visiting grandma and grandpa in kansas small town st francis kansas uh and my record for one day of changing diapers was 34 diapers so Oof. i think i got you beat brother yeah no <laughs> hey you can win that one. I, the, I'm, I'm, I try to be super active. And I think our generation of dads has stepped up a lot. I mean, I think the dad movement now is very big. I remember talking to my dad about it. How many diapers he changed total? Not a whole lot, if any. Yeah. yeah. So like now that's, dads are that's a generation. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no longer free pass dad on that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's not just go to work and come home and drink a beer and eat dinner. You got to be rolling around with the kids and changing diapers and doing that stuff. And like, I wouldn't have any other way for sure. Um, Absolutely. How, how's the transition been 
after baseball into like your home dad? Like I know one question I also like to ask athletes that I, I interview is sports. Now you are, you played at the top. How is it pushing kids or not pushing, but like where, what's the limit of getting your kids to play? Like I've always wondered that because I love sports. And I was never at your level clearly, but like how far can you nudge? It sucks. <laughs> I hate it because, uh, uh, I'm so uber competitive and I was that guy that was, I want to say average. I was, I was a blue collar player, but I did everything in my waking power to go out there and pursue and do that on the field. So, um, for my kids, for one, they don't have my DNA. Uh, and for two, they don't have my mindset. So it's very challenging because like when my kids are playing, I mean, I know movement as well. Like I train with Barry Bonds' trainer and like I train with the best movement coaches in the world. So I could see like my daughter's in competitive cheerleading, all three of them, and my son's in baseball and soccer or whatever. And I could just see movement. Mm -hmm. And I've studied that at such a high level that I could help them. And it's so hard because like, especially in baseball, I have a PhD in swinging a baseball bat. I have a, you know, like, like I was one of the best in the world at doing that. And I could see one swing. I could know exactly what they're thinking. I know, know exactly what they're feeling. I know exactly what to say to them. And I know exactly what adjustment to make. Like it's a gift that I have that I've trained so high. And I so passionately want to help them because I want them to have the advantage because they're my kids. But at that point, it's just like, it's so hard to have that balance and that fine line between, uh, you know, like coach and dad. So um, I, I'm like a hundred or zero. There's no in between with me. Sure. So I had to get to the point to where I just let my kids do what they do. And I have to be dad and supportive and really try to train that growth mindset to where I can help them understand that it's about the journey. It's about the work. It's about going out there and doing the things to allow yourself to get better, not attach yourself to the end result. Because my kids, especially my boys, they're like pastor's children. Like the, uh, being a pastor's son is one of the most difficult things to do because you feel like you got to be perfect because your dad's a pastor, right? So the, the limitations and the expectations that the child puts on himself are far greater than the dad. So that's what happens to my son, I, my, my youngest son, Noah. Uh, I would take him to go play baseball and he'd be crying on the way home from the games. And I wouldn't treat him any different that I would treat the other kids in the teams, but I'm pretty passionate with what I do. But uh, he was, I'm like, why are you crying, bud? And he's like, I don't want to let you down, dad. And it's just like, yeah. uh, so then I go through the process. I have the ACE intangibles, attitude, concentration, and effort. That's the only thing I require my kids to do with whatever they do, especially on a sports field or activity. If you can control your attitude, you can control how you focus and concentrate, and you have to give max effort. So you don't allow yourself to get excuses and blame other people. Like those are the intangibles that I mastered to have success. And I think that's translatable and transferable to anything across the board of an athletic. So I've had to take the back seat and be like, Cool. I'm the dad out there, like in the, in the outfield or I'm the guy, like I'm totally disconnected from that because my kids really don't, uh, they don't have that aspiration to, to like go play college sports or whatever, which is cool with me. Like my son, like my, my young son, Noah, he wants to do skateboarding now. So it's like, okay, you're not going to hang out at the skate park because I don't like the, 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 the type of dynamics that are at the skate park with high school kids and, and, and young adults or whatever. If you want to skate, go out, so out front and master the ollie, master the kickflip, do it a thousand times. I'll take you to do these things, but you've got to understand what it takes. If this is what you want to do, you got to do that. So whatever it is, like I, I'm trying to be there to have that balance because I was so like over the top because I was average and I was able to achieve such great things because I mastered the intangibles. And it's, yeah, it's like, it's just the work. I think those are great words, the ace that you just threw out there. Like those are great words. I, I've heard from many athletes, like I said, my kids are very uh, little. The car ride home is huge. I didn't, like I've heard that from everyone I've talked to that have played pro sports is with their kids driving home, the car ride is gigantic. There's only one thing that should be said to a kid after the game, especially from athletes, is one thing. Five words. I love watching you play. That's it. And that's, that, that's where I've had to get to because the car ride home is like, 
dude, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? Right. Come on. Like you think you're this, like, like my son's like, like chirping at his teammates and, and soccer and like flipping his hair. And I'm like, dude, like, you think you're good, bro? Like, like, you're not even good enough. Like, and you talk crap to your teammates, dude. So, so that's really not productive. I love watching you play. So I, I've never received that from my father. Uh, and it's a generational thing. Uh, my dad loved me the very best he could. But uh, that, and I'm always, always tell my kids, I'm proud of you. When I see good effort, I don't give a darn the result. The results are meaningless, man. So whether they win or not, but if they're not giving good effort, uh, and if they're not they're having a good attitude and they're not focusing, I have a problem with that. Like, I, I, I'm going to say something. So I always address that. I love watching you play, and I'm proud of you. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's, see, like, I, I do these so people can hear this stuff. Because, like, you know, I'm sure you've been to many games where the parents are awful. and they, Yeah, good. I, I work at a high school. So, like, I go to the high school football games, and parents are terrible. And I was like, just be there and support. Don't break down other kids. Don't get after other athletes. Like, they're just trying to do what they do. Like, yeah. So, so we, I think we gotta that's... Go, we got to go to the point right there to understand a perspective. Like, I'm the why guy. I'm like, why do people do what they do? So we got to understand, like, we have children raising children, right? Yeah. So a lot of these parents are like children. So they need just as much development. They need the ace and tangible just as much as the athletes. So once these parents are like... Like, like children, and they're trying to fill that void inside themselves uh, through their children, right? People say That's they live vicariously through their kids or whatever. But now it becomes an investment because now to even compete, uh, like I have three girls in competitive cheerleading, all-star cheerleading, and it cost us pr probably $30,000 this year for that. But we have a great understanding. I want my kids to understand and get what the sport and the platform has to teach them. I don't care if they win. I don't care. what. I want the sport to teach them. But... But for most people, most parents, it becomes an investment. And now that pressure, we have a child parent with the pressure of the investment. I'm spending a thousand and whatever to try to keep up because whatever. Now that's getting portrayed and, and, and gone through to the player. Now the kids don't even like, like, don't even love, like, don't even like it no more. Then they're like, dude, I'd rather be at home sitting on freaking the video games, you know? Right. So it, we it, have children raising children. Yeah. When it turns into a job for the kids, you just suck everything straight out of the the love of the game. Like you said, you had with baseball and working as hard as you did and this honing your craft. I, I, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate, but it I, I probably won't change anytime soon with a lot of the parents, which is a bummer. Um, yeah. Moving on from baseball. Now you're in Arizona. Um, I see you on Instagram and I'll list all this stuff. Dude, you, you post a lot of great stuff, a lot of very, uh, helpful tips for everybody and things like that and to push forward and all that stuff. How is it now being Shea Hillenbrand ex all-star worker? Like you're, you got a job, like you're, you're in real estate, you're doing a your thing. How, how is that? Like the transition? I, uh, the, the transition is the most difficult thing to do for a professional athlete because we attach our identity, our identity to the game because we really don't know who we are before we go into what we do. So it's really, really imperative that you understand who you are before you do what you do. Because as you scale, become a high performer, you, 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 you pretty much have to be obsessed with what you do. For the vast majority of us, that obsession is unhealthy. And we attach our game to the name, or excuse me, our name to the game because the pressure to succeed is so great. You got to understand, I'm playing in front of 40,000 people every night and like on stage and I'm living and dying on the success or failures. So I absolutely picked the wrong sport ever because uh, I struggled with that identity thing myself. So like I said, I jumped shipped after playing Major League Baseball in the prime of my career. And I came home to be a father, a father to my three children and I pursued my second dream of owning a zoo. So uh, my kids like that way better. They have way more amazing memories at that zoo, uh, riding golf carts, riding ATVs and, and doing farm stuff and, and hanging out with the animals and all that stuff, like the down home true living uh, was, was really a great experience for them and they loved that. Uh, but, but through that, after that, I went through some dark times in my life. I got divorced and, and, and went through some challenging times. And uh, until I found who I was, I really didn't know uh, what I was supposed to do. I didn't know the purpose of life because I lived what we all think the purpose of life is. When you're in elementary school, you raise your hand, right? What do you want to do? I want to play major league baseball. I'm the only one that did it. You know, and what do you want to do now? I'm going to go buy a zoo, my second dream. So I did it, but I didn't know who I was. So um, uh, through life circumstances, I was able to be blessed to um, 
work on myself and discover who I truly was. And I take that with great pride that you mentioned that, like my social media posts and stuff like that, because I wasn't like that before. I was the cancer of the clubhouse. I was the a-hole. I was not a good person. Like I was so angry and I hurt so much and I had so much pain inside myself through what I went through. I was a kid raising kids. So uh, pretty much, uh, or I was a kid playing major league baseball on top of the world. So uh, being able to do that now, like it's, it's really like amazing because the stuff that I say and I do is coming purely from who I am. I'm not doing it to try to get of justification. But before when I played baseball, I was trying to get noticed. I was trying to get my ego stroked and I was trying to get uh, affirmations from people. But now that I found myself, and that's what I challenge every dad or every parent or every person listening to this is really who are you at the core, you know, and, and really identify what you want to do with yourself and go from there. I can't be a good dad. I can't be a good partner or a spouse or, or I can't be productive at ever what I want to do if I don't know who I am and what makes me tick and ticked off and all that stuff because all of us men especially, is this pretty much a men's podcast? Yeah, for the most part, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all of us men, we hide this stuff because we have ego, we have pride, we got to provide and, and we see this all of, uh, transparency and vulnerability as a weakness, man. I can't share anything. It's weakness. And, but until I shared that stuff, until I peeled back the layers of the onion, so to speak, uh, to be able to go through and like, what, like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, What's my purpose? Because we all have a purpose. Like, and you can create your future. Like this Shay Hillenbrand right here sitting in front of you, I created this one. And I worked harder on this Shea Hillenbrand now than I did on the Shea Hillenbrand playing Major League Baseball. And I'm super proud of that. We all can do that. We can create our future. So what I'm doing now is I'm helping people bust through that, the status quo, bust through somebody, you know, people that or, or whomever that's like, man, I know that I, I want to do something. I know I have something I'm supposed to be and, and something to go after, but I just can't figure it out. That's my person. And that's the people, my voice I want to reach through uh, with that. Uh, yeah. Great job, man. Like, I remember some of the comments and I obviously before these interviews, I do go, I Google and yeah, I, there were, there were times in your baseball that moments that weren't highly looked at. Um, they were really highly looked at and I'm so grateful for it, brother, because right. check it out. If I didn't do what I did, people would remember me, man. The way I did it, like I was a two time all-star and I made $18 million and I hit 300. Like that's not like superstar stuff to stand out. There's a lot of people that I play with that had similar numbers that nobody even talks about or remembers, but, yeah. but was the people like I said things to general managers. I said things to managers and I was this guy. I mean, I got kicked off my junior high team. I got kicked off my high school team. I got kicked off my junior college team. I'm not making this up. And I got in fights with managers all through the minor leagues. I got kicked out of minor league games by umpires, like insane stuff. But I luckily I figured it out by the time I got to the big leagues uh, to be able to sustain and be there to have success. But uh, I'm in the process right now with, uh, with the company where we're shooting a, an epic documentary on my life. Uh, and if I didn't have the path and do the things that I chose to do, I chose to do all that. If I didn't have that path, I wouldn't have this opportunity to, for one, talk to you, for two, to be able to shoot an epic documentary to reach people, to help them get out of where they are. So all my challenges, all my failures, all that stuff I had, I own that. I'm grateful for it. I love it. I've busted through that. I understood why I did the stuff that I did. And that character in my story is a different character than I am now. And I hope that could inspire people to be able to understand, dude, like if Shay did that, like, man, like I, I, I ought to be able to do it myself. So that I want people to draw inspiration for that. I own everything. All the fights I got into with the manager in the club out, like everything, like before I couldn't own it because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I did. I was so disconnected. And I, and I was like, man, that's not me. And I try to justify my actions and like all of us do, right? Like we don't know how it is, whether it's our wife or our kids or interaction with other people. We might not be bringing our A game every day. We just don't, I can't figure it out. And then we try to justify because we know deep down inside, that's really not us. But then we stay in status quo and complacency mediocrity because we don't know how to bust through that. I didn't know how to bust through that when I was on top of the world. So I'm like a prime example of that. So it's like, like I wanna be that person to be able to go out there and just to use my voice to inspire people and help them with techniques to be able to get to where they need to go. Yeah, it's absolutely your journey. And if that stuff didn't happen, you're right. You're not sitting in that chair. We're not talking. I think it's, it's, it's badass, but it's great. I did. That's what's cool because like, like so many people, so many people, uh, you know, try to tap dance around the subject or talk topics or whatever. Like 
bring it, bring whatever you want. I will say it, dude. Like I got in a fight with the manager of the clubhouse. I called Theo Epstein, the GM of the Red Sox, explicitives on the radio, on the front page of the Boston Globe. Shea Hillebrand calls Theo Epstein, ba ba ba. I had to apologize to the gay and lesbian. Like I own it all, dude. I like it's crazy. Like, but I only way I can own it, dude, is because I understood what led me to take those actions. But me, the character is formed by experiences and how you navigate through your life, right? And how you interpret and communicate those experiences to yourself, your belief system, the stories you form in your head. Like we're not created to be donkeys like I was. I know that for a fact. Yeah. I just couldn't figure it out. And it took me to go get one breath away from losing my life to be able to like, oh, wake up, let's figure this out. So um, it's cool. I love it. Wow. Yeah. I, Shay, we'll have to talk before your documentary comes out maybe do another one because i'd love to hear even more man and push that out because that sounds awesome like to follow your career and see where you're at now hats off to you my man doing it appreciate it it, brother yeah doing it right for sure um to end it i would like to hear this is when i ask athletes because you look like you're you're still in good shape over there um the dad bod is a thing now this is a light one where dad's have kids and they decide to let it all go. Get no, out I understand, sh- like, I understand, I, I apologize. I, I said that incorrectly. The one of the most difficult things I've ever had a t- challenge with is communicating what's in my <laughs> mind and what's in my mouth. Because I never had to communicate. All <laughs> I had to do was hit a baseball, dude. So what I'm saying is like, I can't comprehend a dad bod. Like, I, 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 like why would somebody want to do that? I don't understand it. Each is to their own. I'm not going to judge. So go ahead. So yeah, just wondering, like, how do you, I mean, I'm the same way. I run every day. I work out every day. There's a lot of people who have kids and then they just decide, well, it's kind of, I've given up, right? How do you find your time throughout your five kids, your busy schedule to find a workout time? Like, how do you make sure you fit that in? I get up at five, four 30. Right. Okay. (laughs) You have these, the simplest answer. That's perfect. But, but, but but what I want to understand, like I, I, I never use an alarm clock. Like, like my dream and my passion and my fire and my fuel wakes me up. So many of us dads are in complacency thinking that we just got to provide because we don't have the skill sets to go out there, to go out there and make a difference and go to that next level. So it's like, okay, I'm going to have a wife. I'm going to have the house, two kids, three kids. I'm going to go get a job, maybe 60, 70, 80 in California, $100,000 a year. I'm going to provide. Like, I have a good buddy that's doing that. And he's like, I'm just complacent, dude. I'm like, we haven't been created for that. So, like, you need the energy. You have to understand, like, like why we need to do these things. I need to take care of myself. I want to be there to walk my flipping daughter down the aisle when she gets married, man. Like, it's just, like, all these things that go through my mind that drive me. It's like, okay, like, and as well, I don't, I'm not going to go there. But it's just, like, we need to be able to understand, like, your diet, and exercising is the two most important things that we need to do to address, right? Especially if you want to be a good influence on the kids because the world's influencing our kids and obesity is insane. So they're going to see that with environment at the house and then our mindset. So the way to the mindset, the way to get through, the way to bust through the, 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 the status quo is you have to understand, be accountable for what you're putting in your mouth and you have to understand I have to exercise. Exercising isn't working out in the gym for an hour. Exercising is getting up in the morning and going on a mile long walk or going on a 20 minute exercise. Do some squats in your room, have a morning routine. Why? Because you gotta, you gotta fill yourself up. I always tell this to everybody, Oprah said it best. You're in charge of filling yourself up and keeping yourself full. Us as men, we are the head of our household if you're biblically gonna operate from there, right? In order for me to be the head of my household, I have to take care of myself and get myself right standing and I have to love my wife unconditionally. I don't have to, I don't, I don't demand it. I have to love her unconditionally. It's my duty. If that's not what you wanna do, you shouldn't have got married nor had kids. That's our responsibility. So there's a lot that goes along with that. If you want to combat stress, you want to combat anxiety, you want to combat all that anger, exercise, exercise and get moving and fill yourself up. Just get audio books. Just get a little bit of stuff. Listen to podcasts, go in the clubhouse, whatever that is. Stop sitting in front of the TV on Sundays and watching football all day long. Why? We're doing that to escape our reality of who we are and wasting out on an opportunity to make the biggest impact possible in our children's life. Thank you. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> you're the man. I love your passion. I love to hear what you got to say. Uh, I, I, do, I appreciate you coming on here with me. I think we could go for hours. Like, I yeah. feel like you, you got so much to say, man. I appreciate 
all those words. You're right. Why are we, and you played baseball and watching sports. It is, what are we doing? Why am I watching these people play? And I love, I love sports, but you're right. Get up and move around. You're going to waste the whole Sunday watching football and all that. I don't have TV in my house, man. We don't have TV. We, we, for you. We, have, we have, we do internet, uh, whatever. Uh, I, I monitor my kids. I have, I have kids lock. There's an app called kids lock um, out there that you can monitor your kids. You could see, you give them time to go on the app. You can like, I'm not going to take away all their social media, all that stuff because it's part of their world. Right. But it's like, okay, if you do these chores, you do this, you can get an hour on this or do that. I monitor all that stuff. I'm sorry. I don't care what you, what anybody says sure. nine o'clock I'm going in their rooms, taking their phones and yeah. like, why are you taking my phone? Well, I'm taking your phone because it's my house. Right. Yeah. So putting those boundaries and know that it's not there to be, uh, you know, like a, a donkey. It's there to, to have safety and structure because kids need that. But how can kids have safety and structure and boundaries and guidelines if we don't have it for ourselves? It starts with us and it starts with getting up in the morning or whatever it is. It could be in the afternoon. It could be when you get home, but just set those guidelines, set those rules for yourself. It doesn't have to be great. Just has to be something. Just get that momentum going. Just understand that I need to take care of myself because if I'm stagnant, a man without a visual perish. They're like, we'd be great. Like you'll just die. If you just stagnate, you die. And that's what happens to so many dads. And it breaks my heart because we have so many gifts and talents inside of us that we could use to impact our family, our community and leave a legacy. Right? So what happens is we got to, our, 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 our self, we die inside, our relationships die. We can't be a solid dad if we do that. It all starts with just making, taking some action. Yeah. Be a good role model. Right? I mean, be a role model to your kids. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's huge. Well, Shay, thank you so much. I appreciate it again. And please keep me updated when your documentary rolls out. Cause I think I'll be first one. To watch oh, you'll it. be updated. It'll be everywhere, man, because I've been, <laughs> praying and I've been meditating. I've been visioning it. I've been working really hard on myself to get to this point because it's going to be a deep, deep, uh, emotional for myself. Uh, like, like I'm pulling back all the layers of the onions awesome. of, of going one breath away from losing my life and, and all this stuff I did on the road because not to, not to glorify, but just to give somebody a glimmer of hope to say, dude, you might be one breath away from giving up, I want this movie and I want this documentary and I want the stuff that I do to switch that mindset to be in one breath away from that breakthrough to become who you've been, who you want to create yourself to be. For sure. Super inspirational, Shay. Can't wait for it. Thank you again. Baby dude, out. And next, thanks, brother. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.